Okay, well, we're uh, welcoming you to another episode of Dr. J's Philosophy Podcast. We've got Emma with us today. The reason Emma is with us, normally she's great at doing TikToks with me and super helpful. People see her that way, but what people don't see about Emma is uh, she's actually a, a master at insurance. She is. She is. It's where it's one of her specialties here in our office when she's not doing TikTok. She's actually helping people put their money in order, managing their insurance to maximize those benefits so that people can improve their smiles, right? Yeah, totally. That's what she does. So she, Emma has, um, gets a bunch of questions from insurance companies all the time. And then of course, whenever we do a, a TikTok or something, we get inundated with a lot of the same questions, which yeah. isn't frustrating. We get it. Everyone's got their own questions, but a lot of them are the same. So we thought we'd put them into a podcast to, to demystify some of the insurance um, myths that are out there mm -hmm. and, uh, and bring insurance into reality for dentistry. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's some things, some facts I want to um, put out there, though, that people should know about dental insurance, okay? Um, number one, and we are insurance friendly. Just so you know, most dental offices are insurance friendly. I'm not anti-insurance. I do think um, they're a business. And uh, they obviously don't work for free and they don't volunteer and donate their time and services. They are in it to make money. Yeah. Like dentists, yeah. if we're going to be fair, like dentists and dental administrators like yourself, we, we, we work for money, right? Mm -hmm. We're not all independently wealthy and just volunteering. Yeah. So they are a business and they're designed to make money. They want to collect more money from you than they spend. Yeah. Okay. In benefits. But here's some interesting facts a lot of people don't know about dental insurance, and you may not know some of these facts. So dental insurance, any idea what year it started when it came about? No idea. <laughs> 1954 is when it first started in California, a concept, right? Medical insurance had been out for 50 more years. Uh -huh. uh, but 1954, it started. Uh, any idea? Now, so those of you who don't know, dental insurance, there's a couple of like, catchphrases mm -hmm. that people just know. One, your maximum annual payout, right? That's something because dental insurance isn't like medical where they just want yeah. to pay. They have a maximum annual payout, yeah. okay? In 1954, when it first started, any guesses as to what the maximum annual payout was? I bet it was like $100 or something like that. You would think oh. because today, what is it? Generally, now it's I've never seen it over like twenty five hundred dollars. That's and that's unusual. Yeah, twenty five hundred no, is probably an outlier. Minimum or like the median mean? I don't know. Yeah. Median is like a thousand dollars. Yeah, average, average is about a thousand. About a thousand. 1, okay, yeah. the the maximum annual payout back then was one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, really? I'm shocked because also I know dentistry has obviously gotten more expensive than oh, the fifties. We are going to get into that. Yeah. All right. It is absolutely crazy uh, that they haven't even kept up with underinflation uh, rates, yeah. okay? It is the same. Now, there are a few, like you said, that are outliers, and there are also a few that are outliers on the other side. Mm -hmm. Like, we know some policies. I don't want to badmouth any particular policies, but we know some that don't even pay a 1000 Yeah. It's just insanely yeah. terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Okay. So the maximum annual payout back then was 1000 to 1500 The Do you know what the average, how about this? The average cost for a crown in 1954? Um, I'm going to guess like $300. All right. So you're, you're close. Average cost for a crown back then was one to $200. Oh my gosh. So when you have a thousand dollar maximum, how many crowns could you potentially get out of your maximum annual payout? Don't make me do live on math. <laughs> ten. <laughs> ten, right? Oh you could goodness. get maybe yeah. ten crowns that they would pay for. Yes, absolutely nuts. Um, average um, average cost of a crown today. I mean, it's normally around like fifteen hundred dollars yeah which is what the max was then that's right so the average and this is all location dependent we're going to do another video on the cost of stuff mm -hmm. but the average crown across the united states ranges from a thousand to thirty five hundred dollars yeah. somewhere in the middle okay now the insurance maximum annual payout has not changed well has barely changed yeah while 
the cost of a crown has multiplied 10 plus times, okay? So now you can maybe get one crown, right? If you yeah. were to, we're gonna get into how they pay out in a minute, but the maximum annual payout is only worth about one crown these days. So um, if, if it had kept up with inflation, <laughs> what would the maximum annual payout be today? What's I know that? I don't. You told me not to ask you to do math. I'm just going <laughs> to throw it out like there. Ten times, what, right? Yeah. What would you think the insurance should pay based on current rates in dentistry? I mean, a lot, a lot more than they do, because it, a lot of people need not just like one crown a year. Sometimes people need multiple crowns a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if it went with how the cost of Dentistry has gone up, what, that's like 10 times? So what, like $10,000? $10,000. They would dollars. never, they would it never. Would be, it would be between five and $8,000 maximum if they kept yeah. up with it. Now, here's the thing that's a kicker. Okay, this is what sucks. I don't know what, if I'm allowed to say that in a podcast. <laughs> um, do you think the premiums that the people pay have gone up, stayed the same, or gone down in the last 50 years? The premiums for their insurance probably gone up. They've I mean, <laughs> tripled, quadrupled. <laughs> yeah. It's so much more expensive yeah. for dentistry while they've kept that maximum annual payout the same. Yeah. It is a terrible disservice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and I, I will give the insurance a benefit of the doubt. Look, I could talk forever. I'm really sorry, but things come to me. To give insurance the benefit of the doubt when they first started, trial and error, maybe Americans didn't need $1,000 worth of dentistry yeah. back in, in 1954. Um, you know, and so maybe they're like, okay, well, gosh, we don't need this. We're, people aren't using all maybe, of these benefits, yeah. so let's back this up a little bit. Or we'll, you know, with this over time, they just let everything kind of catch up. Yeah. Uh, not to mention the services that weren't offered in 1954, totally. like expensive implants and things yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, they pulled teeth and dentures. Pulled teeth and dentures. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, let's see what else is on here. So let, let's. There to me, there's been two major cost bumps in dentistry mm -hmm. over the last several decades. Um, one of them just happened, and it's a cost bump for everyone in America, yeah. right? Post-COVID. Yeah. I mean, you notice the price of bread, milk, gas, everything has yeah. gone up, and any service, you even as a dentist, when you look at lab costs, lab supplies, mm -hmm. it all is all gone yeah. up. Shipping also has, because of COVID, people, workers and everything, it takes everything, to get longer, mm -hmm. take longer for us to get things. So that, that price has gone up. Yeah. Shipping. Well, when you take, you take into account the hundred to $200 cost for a crown, you take the inflation mm -hmm. over the last 50, 60, 70 years, mm -hmm. right? Since insurance started, uh, the crowns have gone up, you know, with inflation, but there's been two bumps, right? One was now it's a little more than inflation this year mm -hmm. and or last year. And then the other one, uh, really, really big event in medicine, not not a good event, but something that really set medicine and dentistry uh, on a more expensive path. I wouldn't, ex you don't what, have a school? medical background. No, no, no. Oh. School is definitely more than gone up more than inflation. Um, but in the late 80s, when HIV came about, mm -hmm. if you look up videos, you can find these on YouTube of dentists doing dental work. I literally saw a video in dental school of a man who was a dentist, a cigarette in his mouth, no gloves, doing dentistry. What? No joke. Oh okay? my God. Now he didn't, it wasn't in the 80s, but it was yeah. a video we that we have from back then. He's just like yeah. talking to the video, trying to teach with a cigarette in his mouth. Oh my God. So HIV completely changed infection control uh -huh. in medicine, yeah. right? So now it's gloves, masks. There's dentists that had to transition from being very tactile with their fingers and stuff holding the instruments uh -huh. uh, to having to now learn how to do it with gloves yeah. and masks and, and safety glasses. And thank goodness, glasses. because who knows how, I mean, how people are getting sick from that stuff. You're right, you're right. <laughs> But, but those things cost money. Like yeah. it, it costs a lot of money. Now now yeah. suddenly you got to pay for all of these yeah. disposable things. I mean, things. we get a shipment of gloves and masks so Every frequently week, yeah. now. You know, and we used to only wear masks when we we're doing, you know, working on patients. And now we wear masks pretty much all day. You know, all day. you change them out with each patient, everything like that. 
So one of the things that's kind of interesting uh, about insurance is they only pay a portion of the procedure. Yeah. Do you find that most patients don't get this? No, because especially if you were to call your, you know, your own insurance and you're like, hey, how much do you cover for my crown? They're going to say, oh, we'll cover 50%. Yeah. So then the person's like, okay, so you said my crown is, a th say, $1,000, so $500 is what they're going to cover. Actually, what they don't say is 50% of their allowed amount yeah. And they won't even tell us what Which is a secret. Is. Yeah, it's a secret. So they come up with their own fee schedule. Yeah. And and uh, and so this is the really So you have to do a lot of digging if you want to really mm -hmm. figure out your own insurance stuff. For us, you know, with the working at the office, they don't tell us stuff unless you're the subscriber. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, which brings up a few other interesting points that they they don't tell you what it is. Um, I I heard I don't know this, but this is what I, I know, okay? I know this for a fact. We get um, surveyed by insurance companies, and if you ever call an insurance company for a patient and say, hey, um, how much will you guys cover for Mr. Johnson who's getting a crown? What is your payment for that? Uh -huh. They will ask you one question before they tell you the answer. They'll say, what is your fee? Yeah. They wanna know what your fee is, and then they put that with your zip code. Mm -hmm. And they always, they're tracking this data all the time on what the fees are. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come up with a number that is either the average or just below the average. And then they make these contracts. I get offers every year from insurance companies saying, hey, here's our fee schedule. Please sign up for us. And I'm looking at it. And some of them are half the price. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you ever sign up for that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um, another interesting thing um, cleanings okay mm -hmm. do you have any idea what the ADA recommends for the number of cleanings you should have per year I think it's like three or four right three or four yeah. that's right it, if you have gum disease and are in active treatment sometimes it's even more mm -hmm. but insurance companies pay about they pay for two no matter what two. and it's either every like two a year period so you could even I could do it a cleaning today and cleaning tomorrow or it has to be within like six months in a day yeah crazy so. and if you miss it by a day yeah they won't pay <laughs> yeah and then yeah. the patient's mad at us and mm -hmm. it's terrible yeah uh so they, they only do that even though the ada recommends three to four a year mm -hmm. um, there's a time frame on dental work if you have a crown done uh and if you have to get it uh, if you need a new one mm -hmm. there's a minimum amount of time at least five years at they least won't five they won't cover it even if it breaks, mm -hmm. if it's not their fault, mm -hmm. not the dentist's fault, mm -hmm. they won't cover it. If they've paid on that tooth, you're you're out. You're out. Yeah. Sorry, it's just out of pocket for you. They don't have your back. Mm -hmm. um, how about this? Do you know there's some clauses for missing teeth? Yes. Okay, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so basically sometimes in like your contract, it's really, and it's the same thing. It can be like really secretive sometimes, a missing tooth clause. So if you were already missing a tooth before you had that specific insurance, they won't cover anything to replace that tooth. So sometimes if you break the tooth after you start the insurance, sometimes they'll yeah. you know cover it with an implant or you do a partial or whatever. But if you were already missing that tooth, then it's like a pre existing sorry. condition. Yeah. Right? Sorry. Pre that's a that's a big topic in health yeah. is pre existing pre existing conditions. But here's the other thing. Let's say you had insurance, you worked at this place, you had insurance, you lost a tooth, mm -hmm. didn't have the money. To replace it because mm -hmm. insurance doesn't pay 100%. Okay, mm -hmm. you have to pay out of pocket. You want to get an implant there, but you didn't do it and you wait over five years. Mm -hmm. Will they pay for it? Honestly, I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> most of the time, a missing tooth clause is five years. Okay. If you've been missing the tooth more than five years, you're out. They won't cover you. Terrible. Yeah. It's yeah. the same condition, same person, mm -hmm. still contracted with the same insurance. It's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, here's another concept that I think is really interesting, and then we're going to see if you have any other questions before we wrap it up. Um, is it always cheaper, this is for the patients out there, okay, because this is always a question we get. Is it cheaper always for a patient to go to a provider than to a non-provider? No. Wow, okay, wait, no, no, no one's going to believe you. I know. <laughs> That's insane to hear. Because everyone thinks, I better find a provider, I'm going to get my best value or bargain if I go to someone that is contracted with the insurance. You say no. Yeah. 
Well, because everybody, like you were saying about fee schedules earlier, you never really know exactly what you guys have decided on when it comes to how much a cleaning is going to be. So say you go somewhere and you're in network, the insurance might like cover it all the way, but the cleaning still could have been like more expensive. Okay. But um, it really, it just depends on like what insurance yeah. you have. I mean, there's so many factors. That's why you can't say like, oh, 100% of the time it's going to mm -hmm. be cheaper to go to the provider. Well, I, I come out with this. We, we have insurance. There's an insurance company that we are not contracted with and they, they pay a portion. Let's just say hypothetically a crown was a thousand bucks and they're, and they pay us like 50%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they'll pay, they'll pay $500 on that. They'll send me a contract to sign up with them. And the fee that they want me to sign up with is lower, yeah. which means they're, they're paying me, they're paying 50% of my fee. But if you sign up with a provider, they're going to reimburse that provider cheaper. The crown's going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. Another thing is they're all independent. If I have five employees who don't know each other, who all work for UPS, mm -hmm. let me let me change that. Let's say we've got an employee that works at Target, an employee works at UPS. If um, they both have, we'll just say Aetna, hypothetically, okay? It doesn't matter which one. They both have Aetna. So their HR departments have negotiated with Aetna and have contracted with Aetna. Aetna has made a deal with UPS and Aetna has made a deal with Target. Mm -hmm. Different contracts, different payments. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you're saying making a deal, it's all about like negotiation and stuff like yes. that. Like, it is. You know, it really depends on like who is making the deal and how good they are. That's right. So, if, so if two people have Aetna, they're going to pay something different. Okay. And, and that's, it's unpredictable mm -hmm. for us. Um, okay. Uh, so it's not necessarily cheaper to go to a provider, although I will say generally it will cost less if you go to a provider. Yeah. Generally it will, but not always. So do yeah. you got to do your research. Um, the last thing I would say about dentistry, which we'll do another video about, is when you're selecting a provider, you may not always want the cheapest. Yeah. I mean, if it's something like a crown, you know, you want to make sure that it's done right by someone that like you can trust and like they're using the right materials. They, yeah. I don't know, they've, been doing it for a long time you know some people that are in your network i mean you don't always want i mean your insurance will kind of yell at you if you go out of network sometimes i heard patients they're like you know like my insurance they said i'm not at a network like they made me feel like worried that i'm not at a network provider mm -hmm. and i'm like well it's okay and like they did cover like pretty good you know so yeah you know if, you know if you if insurance is important to you take that into account but go to someone that you trust and that you yeah. know is going to have your best interest even if you have to pay a little more yeah we have mo most of our patients have insurance and of those that have insurance most of them uh, we're, we're not contracted with yeah and so so you don't have to go to a provider yeah. a contracted provider in order to get the service yeah okay I have a hot take yeah well I don't know what that means but <laughs> <laughs> so like my hot take is basically that if you know you have treatment that needs to be done crowns you know fillings implants you have to carry whatever it's not a bad idea to get that insurance because dentistry is expensive like we've been saying but if you if you go to the dentist and you get your cleaning and they're like you know everything looks really good sometimes you're paying more for your dental insurance than they're paying the office for your just your two cleanings you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah so i feel like if you don't if you're not getting a bunch of treatment insurance isn't necessary because two cleanings a year isn't that much if That's you right. really think about it. That's right. And so look at your monthly payments with your in, with your insurance and then look at how much you're spending at the office and see if it's worth it for you. But if you know that you need treatment, probably get the insurance. Okay, cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do not have time to take questions. So we'll write your questions down. We'll try to answer them in another video because we are live right now too, which is kind of funny. But we tried to cover a lot of the things on dental insurance, a lot of the questions that people have. It's, mm -hmm. They're not simple. Like, what does insurance pay for a crown? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, everybody's plan is you different. You don't know. Everybody's plan is different. All right. Well, thanks, Emma, for all your input. Yeah, you have a lot of experience. Yeah. I learned something new today, it. too. <laughs> all right. Well, this is, uh, you know, Dr. J and uh, philosophy, and glad to be able to do this podcast with you. We'll catch you next time with a great subject. Thanks, Emma. Thanks.